Greetings and salutations. Um, I'm going to make this one quick. I'm going to give you a story about the time I had hope. So, my parents met and married in the mid-80s. And the marriage lasted like five minutes. <laughs> like literally five minutes. Almost as if the whole point was for me to exist. Um, no kidding, like like two months or less. And my mom comes back to the States and realizes that she's pregnant. This guy didn't help my mother do anything. The little bit that she did get um, was just kind of chewed up in lawyer's fees. It's ridiculous, right, for the divorce. And I guess you would call it an annulment at that point. In any case, my mom, my mom held it down. My mom and my stepdad held it down. I always knew or heard that I had a sister. So I hear this, you know, I have the sister, I have the sister, I have the sister. I don't know who she is, right? I just heard it. It's the sister, Laura, or something like that. So I want to say I'm 27, 28, and I'm living in California. And my biological father reaches out to my mother's cousin and he's just like hey how you doing man like he didn't leave his cousin with a baby and my my cousin is just so disgusted i'm like his second cousin he's so disgusted by this guy's level of disregard and disrespect he's like no you need to you need to be a person and talk to your daughter so 27 years, I'm looking for my father. I don't know who he is. And then boom. Like, I know who he is, but I don't know who he is. Boom. Drop in my lap. My cousin calls me and gives me the number. Like, I don't know. I don't, literally out of the clear blue sky. Didn't see it coming. So I got the number. And I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm nervous. What do I do? What do I do? So I go buy a phone card. I don't know. I'm scared. Is he going to like me? Is he going to accept me? What's going to happen? I call him. He's in Germany, mind you. I call him. And he couldn't be more agitated. Like, why is this shit calling me? I don't have anything to give you. And he hangs up the phone in my face. At the time I'm married, my husband calls. Does the same thing. Like a couple days later. I'm completely, I'm, I'm, I'm to pieces. I'm to pieces. I'm hyperventilating. I'm like, <gasps> it's crazy. It was, I was really losing it. So I just kind of left it alone. I was like, you know what? It's okay. I turned out fine, whatever. Fast forward, fast forward. I'm divorced. I'm living in South Carolina now. And I'm taking a health course for um, college. I'm going to Benedict College and I'm taking a health course. The assignment we had to do, we had to go through our lineage and health history. And I'm putting in all daddy's information. And then I realized it doesn't really make any sense. Because that is my father. Don't get twisted. But biologically, it's kind of doesn't make any sense. Because the, it just doesn't make any sense. Because it's supposed to be genetic. So, I make a decision and I'm like... Let me, let me try to reach out to this guy's family. Now, mind you, like four years, five years of fast. So, go online, find the information. I get a phone number for the in-laws' family in Guyana. So, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this again. And I go and I call. And the people are like, oh my goodness, we heard about you. You have to come and visit. If it's the 50th anniversary of Guyanese independence, you have to come to Guyana. You got to come home. You got to come home. Come to Guyana. We want to meet you. I'm just like, wow. Okay. So I tell my mom, like, mommy, I'm going to meet Derek's family. Can you come to South Carolina and watch my kids? And she's like, yes, absolutely. So my mother comes down. She's, she's a retired teacher. She comes down and she um, 
keeps my children. Mind you, it's the 50th anniversary of Guyanese independence from the Queen. So you can't find a ticket. I drive. I don't know how many hours. From Columbia, South Carolina. Down to Miami, Florida. Park my car. Fly to Trinidad. And from there on to Guyana. I go and I meet these people. And coincidentally, I had a cousin, a first cousin on my mother's side, of course, who was going to Guyana for the festivities, for the for the celebration. And it was his 40th birthday. So he's treating himself. He stayed downtown in Pegasus. And he's like, listen, I'm totally going to go with you. Like, you need support. Like, I'm going to back you up. I got you. And I'm just like, I can't believe my luck. So my uncle, my mother's eldest brother, he's he splits his time. So he's got a car down there. And my grandmother's got a house down there. Like, it's a whole mood. It's a vibe. And we get the car. And my cousin picks me up one morning and we're going to meet these people. I can't eat. I feel nauseous. I feel nervous. I feel scared. What are these people going to say? How are they going to handle me? How are they going to treat me? Like... I'm I'm like this child, right? I'm 30 something years old at the time. But I go. So we go, take pictures, exchange stories, whatever. The whole time my cousin is sitting there waiting for me. Big dude, maybe like six three, two something. Like, you know, he's like my bodyguard. After we're done meeting and greeting and taking pictures and all those things there, we leave. And I'm walking down the street with my cousin. And my cousin turned to me and he said, Cherry. I'm like, what's up? He's like, you want to hear something crazy? I was like, what? He said, I met your father. I said, excuse me? He said, I met him. I didn't realize until now. When they were telling the story, I remember Auntie Cheryl coming to the house. And the way she described this guy and we see the picture, I met your father. Out of all the cousins that came with me, he wasn't the only one down there. That's crazy. So I meet them. I'm not, then we had the flag raising. And, you know, never more proud to be Guyanese. And I'm, I feel like I can finally close the chapter on, you know, what tree I fall from, who's my father, blah, blah, blah. That was in May 2016, I want to say. August 2017. I'm trying to convince Troy to go to college in Guyana. So Troy and I fly down there um, and we go to University of Guyana campus and we tour the campus so that, you know, we could check it out, went to orientation and everything. He's just like, yeah, I'm good. But we get back to the house and the cousin on my father's side that I had met the year prior, who I planned on visiting, he said, Sherry, where are you? I'm like, I'm at Granny House in, in Victoria. He like, when can you come to town? I'm like, what's going on? He's like, your sister is here. I'm like, Nikki and Vanessa are in Brooklyn. Like, I just saw them. It was my birthday the week prior. Like, no, Nikki and Vanessa are in Brooklyn. It's like, no, your sister, Derek's daughter is here. The girl, Laura, 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 whatever, she was trying to find her family too. And a year later, I went in May 16. She was there August of 17. She went to find his family too. And it was there that we met. So why am I telling y'all this? Just be hopeful, y'all. Be hopeful. Be hopeful. Now, I can't imagine myself without this other sister, you know? And she has a daughter. So I have an aunt. I mean, I have a niece. <laughs> I'm an aunt. I have a niece. So just be hopeful, people. Don't be discouraged. Be not afraid. Um. Yeah, that's it. I hope that, you know, this, this message finds you well. Um, I know I'm cracking my little jokes on my little YouTube channel, but I also want to inspire and um, 
kind of expose myself in a manner by which we can laugh, we can joke, we can cry, we can inspire. Well, now I got to work these people job, working from home. Yay. All right. We're going to do some virtual learning. And now it is time for SpongeBob Trap Music. Enjoy your day.